Yeah, so greetings. So in this demonstration, I'm going to utilize the curve from equation tool in the generative shape design workbench of Katia to create a circle, which might seem very simple since there are multiple ways in Katia to create a circle. This is the very basics of working with parametric equations and how you can get started even making things more complicated than just a circle. So uh, to begin, just a little background information. I'm going to uh, have to create three laws inside of Katia. Uh, each law will represent one of the equations of the parametric equations. Within each law, I've got to create two formal parameters. The first one will be of type of unit type length because Katia is expecting a, an input of a uh, length value for uh, the curve. And then it also needs a formal parameter, which is going to be a real number. So my equations will look something of this nature. I will have for the first equation x of t or something of that nature. Typically, I leave out the brackets when I do these, but it will be x of t equal to 25 millimeters. That's the radius of the circle times cosine of 2 pi 1 rad t. So the cosine function is expecting an angular, something angular. So whether that be degrees or radians, typically I require my students to work in radians. So notice I've got two pi, so two pi radians is one circle. You have to tell Katia that you're working in radians, else if you just see two pi, that's just going to mean to Katia that it's a real number. So two times pi is still just a real number. It's two times 3.14159. That's still just a real number. So you got to tell Katia, hey, that's this is in radians. If you don't, you're going to get a warning message about your units. Then you've got to have the T parameter. And again, the T parameter is going to vary from zero to one. So this is going to start out with a an angular value of zero radians. It's going to work its way up to uh, when T is one two pi radians, which is a full circle. So it'd have cosine of zero. So cosine of zero, of course, is, is one. So it will start off along the x-axis with a point at a positive 25 millimeters, the very first point, and then working its way around to a full circle. Y, the y equation is very similar, except this one is sine. And so again, radius times the sine. So these sine and cosine functions spit out a real number. So cosine will spit out a real number. In this case, it's going to, it's going to generate a one. Sine here is going to generate a zero. So Katia is looking for a, a length value because I have X of T or Y of T defined as a length value. So if I didn't put the millimeters in here or, or in here, or another way to do it is to go 25 times one millimeter. You're going to continue is going to get confused about your units. And so make sure you are very clear about what units you're putting in. So let's begin this inside of Katia. To do that, um, you go to the Knowledge Advisor workbench, or I should say to do that, you go to the Knowledge Advisor toolbar. Behind the Design Table tool, you will see the Law tool. So I'm going to create my first law. So let's call this, I want to call this X to, because it's going to represent the first equation in my uh, circle, parametric equation for my circle. So I'm going to call this X. I just recommend students calling it something descriptive. The first uh, parameter I'm going to create is going to be of type real. So it doesn't have a unit and it's going to represent the parameter for my parametric equations. I'm going to call that T. So notice I went new parameter of type real. So I selected it and created a real number. Then I changed its name to T. The next one will be a length value. So I will select the unit of length and that can be millimeters, inches, any length unit it will work um, when you're working inside of Katia. So new parameter of type length. And I want to call this XT. Can call it whatever you want. Uh, I call it XT. It's just kind of become a habit of me to, to name it that. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to uh, set up my um, equation. So I'm going to move XT over by double tapping it. Then I'm going to go equal. And 
I'm going to enter my radius. Let's go with five millimeters times, which will be a diameter of 10, of course, cosine of two times pi, which is a full circle in radians, but you've got to tell Katia that you're working in radians. So I'm going to go one times one rad and notice one rad, the rad is lowercase, whereas pi is an uppercase. Uh, it's a constant for radian uh, for 3.14159 and then I've got to say uh, times t every equation requires a formal parameter that you're working with in this a real number in this case which is going to be represent a 0 to 1 so that's my first equation I like to hit apply here just to show that I don't have any uh, issues and so but let's create an issue just for demo purposes if I got rid of the millimeters and hit apply this cosine is cranking out a real number so I would end up multiplying a real number times a real number and trying to make it uh, and give it to this length value so the length value will not like that so when I hit apply you're going to get this warning message this will actually work because when you get this warning message and if Katia doesn't know what units you're working in, Katia is going to, to default to millimeters and radians. So I'm working in millimeters, so it will still work fine, but I do not like that warning message. So if you're one of my students, fix it, please. So you can type in millimeters here, or you can type in one millimeter, such as this. Also, if I didn't, if I didn't have the radian in here, the one rad, this would just be a real number. And so Katia is expecting an angular value in here, whether it's radians or degrees. So if I'm working in radians, I do one rad. If I'm working in de degrees, I do one DEG for degrees. So I typically work in radians, so I'm going to leave that as one rad. Hit apply, just make sure there's no warning messages. And you can see if you've got this pulled up on your tree, you can see the first law over under relations. So let's create the second one going to look very similar to the first one. I'm going to call this one Y. Same process. So a type length, I'll call this one YT. Then I'll do a type real. And I'll call this one T. And if they're very complicated equations, sometimes I just copy paste over from the X side and then make whatever necessary changes I have to make, but it, it's fairly easy to create. So I'm going to go 55, I'm sorry, I'm going to go five millimeters times, this is sine of two times pi times one rad times T. So don't forget that one rad and certainly don't forget the T. Katia won't let you go without the T. Hit apply to make sure there's no uh, issues. And then I'm going to hit okay. And that's working. And then the last one here is going to be the Z value. Katia requires all three. So I'm going to call this one Z. And new parameter of type real, call this one T. And a new parameter of type inter of type length. Almost said energy right there, but of type length. And then I'll call this one ZT. And let's create it. This one's simple. So this will be ZT. By the way, you can type all this in too if you get it right. So ZT is equal to zero millimeters times T. And hit apply. So there are my three parametric equations. Now creating the uh, curve from equation is quite simple. I want to pop over to generative shape design. I thought I was already there, but I was in, in the wrong workbench. So uh, generative shape design. So uh, let's go. And I'm going to go down on, on the wireframe toolbar. I'm going to go below spline, uh, spline. I'm going to select curve from equations. So for uh, the X, I'm going to select X here. For the Y, I'm going to select Y here. By the way, I could reverse these. The only difference is going to be on where, what axis the curve will start. So right now the axis, the curve will start on the X axis. And but if I just reverse these two, just start on the y axis instead. And then here, preview it, you can see my circle. Quite simple, all right. So, not a big deal. That is a circle. That's the very basics. The key to this is getting your units right in your laws. But maybe I can 
get a little more fancy since I got a little bit of time here. What if we turn this into a spring? So what if I wanted a spring? So what's the difference between a circle and what a spring would be? So it's our helix, I should say. What would, let's turn this into a, a helix. And so what would be the difference between a circle and a helix? Well, it's the number of revolutions and also how it changes in the Z direction. So let's go back and I'm going to go back to my first law and let's change the number of revolutions. Let's do 10 revolutions. So if I want 10 revolutions, this is going to be 20 pi. So 2 pi is 1 revolution. So 2 pi times 10 is going to be 20 pi. So you can either type in 10 times 2 pi or you can just go ahead and do the math and do 20 pi. Now, when I hit apply and OK, I'm going to, you're going to get something very, very funny looking here. So um, that's OK. That's expected. That's what the curve would actually, and that's actually quite cool. I've, I get some interesting curves sometimes whenever I make changes to my parametric equation. So that's, that's quite interesting. But let's jump over to the Y now and make the same change to the Y side, which is increasing this to 20. And you should see a circle again, but this time it's a circle with 10 revolutions. You just can't see it because I haven't changed the Z direction. So go into my Z value. Let's say that we make this change over, let's go 50 millimeters and apply. You can see my spring or my helix if you prefer. So that again, is still very basic. You can do this in Katia uh, with the Helix tool, but you can also get a little more fancy with this if you wanted to. And I'll just show you an example. What if I came in and again, this is going to require something um, a little bit different, but what if I came in here and I did this little number? What if I came in and said, hey, let's go five, which is going to be the um, the radius to begin with. But what if I added a T in here? So think about that. What if I added a T? So T starts at zero and then it's going to go up to one. So this is going to make my radius go from zero to five. So hit applied and again, you're going to see something interesting in the background because I haven't changed the second equation yet. So notice that's interesting. It looks like the end of my spring got run over there. So uh, let's make the Y change. And I'll put in times T. Okay. I'll make it T times. And you should see a tapered tornado looking thing going on here. So, and again, I can, again, <laughs> You can still do this with the Helix tool in Katia, but you know, again, I'm getting a little bit more interesting, I think. Um, maybe, what if I did something like this? What if I went and I made this T squared? So if you want to do squared, uh, raise it to a power of two. It's double asterisk and then a two. Now, again, it's going to be an interesting shape here as you come out. I find some of my most interesting shapes whenever I am in the middle of changing my parametric equation. So I'm um, just, um, and I've come up with some cool ones I've actually saved because I thought they looked interesting. Then I turn around and give one of my students his assignments and say, hey, can you replicate this? So that's really hard to see because my radius is so small, but let me, let me go in and I'm going to change my initial radius to something bigger. Let's go 20. Then we'll go 20 on this one. And then what you can see happening with my tornado, it's starting to look more like a funnel. You can, you can kind of see that it's, it's got to got that power of two effect as it's getting bigger. And as I make these um, increase on the number of revolutions or uh, decrease the pitch. Let's say I go up to 50 revolutions. 
So I'll change my revolutions to, uh, so that's 50, so that's 25 revolutions. Then I'll make a change. Again, <laughs> that's quite interesting. So I'm not sure that's useful in the real world, but it is quite interesting. You can do a, get a little artistic here if you wanted to with your math. And then let's see what she looks like here. And then and there's my tornado coming in. There's a lot of other, I mean, if you can find a parametric equation for a graph, you can you can probably do an Ikatia. And so that's worth exploring if you've got some interesting parametric equations, some interesting graphs, either 2D or 3D that you want to play with to get to, get to working inside of Katia. I highly encourage you to do it. But this is just the very basics. Have a great day.